There's nothing that my heart wants more than you You are all I'm after There's nothing that I'm holding back from you You are all I'm after Your mercy is upon us forever Like waves upon the shore And you will go before us Through darkness All victory is yours Come on, let's declare the goodness of God You are good Hi, welcome to Victory. We exist for two things, to honor God and make disciples. It's that simple. We're here to help you have a great relationship with God, an exciting, close, and lasting relationship with Him. Also, we want you to meet and get to know people who love, honor, and desire to serve Him. Every week, our worship services at Victory aim to lead you into the presence of God and to challenge you to take His Word and make it real in your life. Victory's praise and worship is dynamic and God-centered. Our messages are Bible-based, relevant, and practical, so you can take it home with you and think about it, then apply it. It's that simple. We are your spiritual family, and we take care of family. Our pastoral services team aims to do just that. You need your baby dedicated or say, I do? Need someone to talk to or need comfort in times of mourning? Victory is here for you because we are family. Sooner or later, you would want to grow deeper in your walk with Jesus. That's where discipleship comes in. At Victory, we have a discipleship track that will help you grow in your relationship with God. It grows you in your faith, sets your foundation straight, prepares you to do what God has called you to do, and that's to go and make disciples. A disciple is someone who follows Jesus, fishes for people, and fellowships with other believers. And because any physical or spiritual journey can get very lonely when you're on your own, we encourage you to join a Victory Group. A Victory Group is a meeting with other people who want to grow deeper in their relationship with God through Bible study, prayer, and fellowship. As we continue to advance God's kingdom, we never forget to reach out and work together with the next generation. Our team of campus ministers are focused on engaging and discipling students in neighboring schools and universities. We also have youth services every weekend dedicated to ministering the gospel in a language and method that makes sense to them. We hope we've given you some insight into who we are here at Victory. We're people just like you, and we look forward to doing God's work with you. Honor God, make disciples. It's that simple. It's a great Sunday once again. Uh, welcome to Victory Rosales, Tayug, and Ordaneta. Thank you for attending our online worship service, and we continue to honor God and make disciples in everywhere. Uh, everywhere we go, we are whether we are at home or at our uh, workplaces, we, we, we see to it that God is being honored. And talking about making disciples, God has uh, did something great in our movement all throughout the month of May, uh, starting with our Making Disciples or our, our, our Discipleship 2021. And this June, uh, it is our time really to be empowered uh, to make disciples through our Making Disciples class online that is on June 23, 7 p.m. via Zoom. So we are inviting everyone. This is not exclusive for our Victory Group leaders or interns. Everyone is invited because we believe that all of us have the uh, ability or even God, all of us have been called by God to, to share the gospel, whether you are a one-day Christian or you are just uh, have attended our service Today, we are inviting you to join us this coming June 23, 7 p.m. for our Making Disciples class. And also, watch out uh, and be prepared as we will be having our mid-year 
prayer and fasting. Woo this is exciting. You know what? Um, for the past six months, God did amazing things in our movement, in our life personally, believing God for something and, you know, uh, God refreshing us and uh, encountering God all the more every day personally. And this time, let's continue to believe God for more. Okay, we will be having our mid-year prayer and fasting that will be on July 6 to 8, uh, 2021. So watch out for more details on our Facebook page. Amen. And so uh, let us go to our giving in Ephesians 1 verse 3. It says, Blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. You know what? The scripture just reminds us that uh, since God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in Christ, let us use our material blessing to advance the gospel in order that people may know what God has purchased for them through Christ. Amen? Are you excited to be used by God through your finances so that people will know who God is and what they did in their life? Can we just dedicate our giving to, to God? Father, we thank you, God. Bless our giving today. Lord, thank you, God, for this day. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord God, for the provision. Thank you, God, for the the, the blessings, Lord, materially and spiritually. Lord, we know, Lord God, that everything, Lord God, that we have comes from you. And so today, we choose to honor you and we choose, Lord God, to magnify your name through our tithes and offering, Lord. And as we obey you today, God, we pray, Lord God, that your name will continue to be honored and be glorified. Lord, we pray, God, and we declare, Lord God, that every, every, Lord, everything that we give today Lord God, will will have will become fruitful, Lord God. Lord, whenever you send campus missionaries, pastors, Lord God, and even church workers, God, we pray, Lord God, that you will cause them to be fruitful, Lord God. And Lord, may continue, Lord God, to bless each one of us, my brothers and sisters, as they faithfully give their tithes and offering. Lord, thank you, God. We honor you for this giving. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hello, good morning to everyone. We are here once again on our online Sunday service. Kami po'y natutuwa na patuloy tayo nagsisilbi sa Panginoon na patuloy din po tayo na faithfully attending our online worship service. I hope that uh, we were able to uh, come to the presence of God as we were singing our praise and worship of the Lord. You know, when we come together such as this, you know, uh, the Lord begins to manifest Himself to us begins to reveal himself to us in a different way. Nakakatuwa when we begin to see the move of God really working in our lives, the importance of coming together, the importance of a, a spiritual family and a, and a community such as this. Uh, pag sinabi po natin na simbahan o pag sinabi po natin na, na community or spiritual family, ang una-una po tumatatak sa isip natin ay togetherness, the unity, uh, and uh, the communion of believers coming together all for the glory of God. We are starting a series we call Life Together. Itong series na po to is three weeks. And we're going to talk about how are we going to uh, relate or have a Christ-centered relationship on marriages, families, and workplaces. Basically, itong Pag-uusapan po natin to is all derived from the book of Ephesians. In fact, the book of Ephesians, if you're going to look at it, um, Paul wrote this book in two segments. First, talks about the gospel story that is found in chapters 1 to 3. 
uh, important theological truths and applying these truths to produce a transformed lifestyle and reach maturity. So when we say when we reach maturity, meaning unti unti po tayo progressive po ang ating uh, maturity. Why? Because increased maturity benefits the community at large, leading Christians to present a more consistent witness to the work of God in their lives. Secondly, is our story, uh, chapters four to six, instructions of practical daily living. This community of faith would walk in accordance with its heavenly calling. A spiritual growth occurs primarily in community with others. You know what, like Christian walk or it, our daily life is to be characterized by unity, holiness, love, wisdom, and perseverance in spiritual warfare. So in the summary of the gospel story reshapes every part of our story. So when we talk about the book of Ephesians and talk about life together in this context, okay, I would like to lead you now to Ephesians chapter 5, verses 21 to 33. Quite long scripture. It reads, Submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit to your husbands. As to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church his body, and is himself its savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands. Verse 25, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water and with the word so that he might present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing that she might be holy and without blemish. In verse 28, in the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it just as Christ does the church. Verse 30, because we are members of the body, therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound and I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Let's all pray. Father, we thank you for this day. Bless the reading and the preaching of the word. Speak to us, O God, in Jesus' name. Amen. If you notice, Paul uses marriage as an analogy of the kind of relationship that Christ has to the church and the church to Christ. We would also see attitudes and responses as key in order for this relationship to flourish. In fact, the relationship of a husband and a wife reveals Christ's relationship with the church and is reenacting the gospel story. The mutual respect and honor of both husband and wife is the perfect picture of Christ's relationship to the church and vice versa. The same idea is applied to children's relationship to parents and employer to employees. And that will be the content of our series for the next three weeks. Life together is a covenant relationship of a husband and wife. And amazingly, this is patterned in the way Christ values the church. Makikita po natin how Apostle Paul have used the analogy or the picture of the relationship of a husband and wife. Paul uses this picture of husband and wife. And our goal today is that we may be able to see the context on how do we relate with others, whether they be in church or in the community. Let me start by saying submission is two-way. 
In verse 21 to 24 reads, Submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. Note that word, reverence for Christ. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and his himself, its Savior. Verse 24, Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. The concept and the context of submission as the scriptures presented is the church submits to Christ. This kind of submission is not lording over, rather a submission that is fully driven by one's willingness. When translated in Greek, the word submission communicates obedience to God-given authority. So you would see this, you know, it, it really is a beautiful relationship. Why? Because this relationship is brought out by reverence or through the reverence in Christ. The relationship of Christ to the church and the husband to his wife is selfless, respectful, honoring, and sacrificial. In short, love. Biblical submission never means mindlessness or blind following, but it is the opposite. It is joyful, wholehearted commitment to follow a worthy figure. Now we would begin to see that this relationship is basically founded on trust and love, on how we would be able to exemplify that using the picture of a husband and a wife. Sabi nga nila, ay isa sa mga pundasyon ng relasyon ng mag-asawa ay trust and love. Kung, ba, kung wala raw po itong dalawa, it would be difficult to raise a family or it would be difficult to maintain or to strengthen a relationship. You see, the very essence of Christian faith and discipleship is submission to God, to God's constituted authority and is not dependent on perfect or flawless performance. Meaning, hindi dahil sa hindi magandang performance o hindi maayos o hindi tama ang kanyang pamumuno, hindi na ibig sabihin na hindi na tayo susunod. However, pag tinan po natin, okay, mas malalim po ang gustong ituro sa atin ng salita ng Diyos. Bakit po? When we repent and believe, we do nothing other than confess to a holy God, isn't it? And then we would say, you are right, I am wrong. Then I submit to you. When we begin to have an attitude of, of humility, then we begin to understand what submission is all about. The basic and fundamental posture of a believer toward God is submission. When we learn to submit, the Lord begins to reveal Himself to us. The more we begin to acknowledge His, His Lordship, His authority over us. That's why in the book of James, chapter 4, in verse 7 reads, Submit yourselves therefore to God. When we begin to submit ourselves to God, then, then, the home and the church are God-made fields in which Submission may bloom. Imagine a home or a church that each one submits. Imagine how peaceful it could be or how, how it could flourish. The light of God is shown and we begin to be salt and light to the world. Secondly, is serve one another. In verse 25, husbands, Love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Let's jump to verse 20, 28. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. Look at this scripture. It basically teaches on how not just loving himself, but learns to love 
others or love his wife. The more he learns to love his wife, the more he learns to love himself and vice versa. In fact, the laying down of one's life for another is the deepest expression of love. Jesus himself laid down his life for us. John 15 verse 13 reads in the NLT, There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. You see, when a husband follows the example of Christ by laying down his life for his wife, he expresses the deepest form of love. Imagine, sabihin to ng, ano, ng mga, mga husbands sa kanila mga asawa, susungkitin ko ang bituin at ang buwan para sa iyo lamang. And this, you know, this is a very common phrase or a common uh, love note or a very cheesy uh, statement. Imagine, bituin at buwan, susungkitin para sa iyo lamang. Sabi pa nga nila, you know, parang, parang, uh, parang uh, tatawagin daw niya si Bathala. Parang, parang pa sa iyo ka lamang. You know, this, this, when, we, when we look at this thing, you know, these are basic you know, uh, love notes to one another. But all of us must realize, okay, one of the most valuable expression of love is service. Service. When we learn how to serve one another, not because of anything, that is a selfless act. I'm quoting Mother Teresa. She said, intense love does not measure, it gives. It doesn't measure, it doesn't count. Ang gusto lang niyang gawin, magbigay. You see, when a couple is single-minded in fulfilling the purposes of God, this is their act of service for one another. The Lord is honored in marriage when the husband and wife honor one another. In fact, their shared life stirs up their devotion to God and to one another. Matthew 19 verses 5 and 6, it reads, Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast, hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Verse 6, So they are no longer two, but one. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. Why? Because when we stick and hold fast to one another and honoring, honoring what God has joined together, God is honored and praised. Because it was the Lord who brought them together, they are united in fulfilling the purpose of God in their marriage. One nugget of wisdom. Marriage complement each other, not compete with one another. The idea is to complement, not competition. Husband and wives, you are not meant to compete. You are meant to complement. You are meant to serve one another. Marriage is meant to complete. This is the reason why couples are urged to serve one another. Just as Christ's church is admonished to do the same, serve one another. Yung po yung encourage sa atin. That we don't, we don't um, forget that we should serve each other and one another. We're not just serving people, those whom we love. We also serve the people, those whom are difficult to love. We don't just serve people who are just, who are just, you know, easy to understand. We also serve people who are difficult to understand. We're not just called to serve people whom we like. We're strongly encouraged by the scriptures to serve even those whom we dislike. Pati yung mga ayaw natin makasama, makaaway natin, 
the Lord encourages us to serve them. So how does it mean? Okay. So what does it mean? Life together. Submit to one another. Serve one another. And lastly, honor God's sacred standard. In verse 31, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. There's always a constant battle between God's standard versus man's standard and biblical culture versus world culture. Which culture to follow has always been a challenge to many. But guess what? The best route to consider is which culture honors God. Ano ba ang kultura na nagbibigay ng honor sa Panginoon? I had a chance to check on these things in the internet and uh, one, one article in the CSA News published in October 9, 2020 by Joseph Peter Calieja, he said, the Philippines' figures are consistent with a World Health Organization report that says violence against women has increased during this year's pandemic because couples are spending more time together at home. This really shocked me simply because the scripture says and teaches us the intent and design of God is for man and wife to live together and be united and to enjoy life together. That's the intent. But why is it that couples who find themselves spending more time together turns violent and destructive? But kapo kaya? Bakit all of a sudden, all of a sudden, in this pandemic, and daming uh, domestic violence na nangyari, you know, and daming reports sa ganito, hindi lang mental health, but all of these uh, domestic violence uh, accounts or events happened. And, and many say, okay, it has really risen up. So, if we're going to re really look at it, dapat sana nga, since magkasama yung mag-asawa, dapat, di ba, sana mas peaceful, mas maganda. Pero bakit hindi ganun na nangyayari? You see, in the fury of evolution, primates are considered as the closest human relatives. Their behavior and responses to situations are studied and are compared to human behavior. Scholars and other learned experts use them as a model in understanding human behavior. To me, upon knowing that, sabi ko, that's sad. It's sad that instead of having a good understanding of these behaviors, humans are referred to animals whose intellectual capacity is lower than his. Mas mababa. Imagine, our human behavior is patterned or studied with primates. Isn't that off? Isn't it that to have a more concrete study on one's needs, a much higher reference is needed? Hindi yung hahanap ka na mas mababa. Bagkos, hahanap ka na mas mataas para alam mo kung ano yung standard mo. This brings me to think, could this be one of the culprits why man think and act more like animals more than embracing the pattern of God's creation of man? Instead of looking to their creator to understand their original and intended design, Man alludes, iba ang kinokopya ng tao. Ang masama dito, kinokopya nila to other created species such as primates. You see, these standards which the Lord has set separates man apart from other created things or other created beings. Sa totoo lang po, iba tayo sa kanila. Man was created to live according to God's purpose. As much as the husband and wife is called to abide by the Lord's standards, they reflect 
God's eternal family. That's why you would see this in, in the uh, verse 32 and 33 in Ephesians. Sabi nga the mystery, or this mystery is profound. And I'm saying that it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. So what I'm, what I'm trying to point out, instead of looking at other references or other standards, where the world tries to offer to us on how we would behave with our relationship with our husband and wife or with other people. Let's rather look at the standard design and intent of God, how we were created, how we are created. In the Old Testament, marriage was like the relation of God to His people. But when Christ came, the mystery of marriage became clear as it portrayed Christ's covenant with His people, His commitment to the church. So now we see marriage is a picture of something more than a man and a woman becoming one flesh. In essence, the deepest meaning of marriage is the relationship between Christ and the church. Meaning, in every relationship that we have, it should be patterned or the basis or the foundation should be Christ. Ang pundasyon dapat ng ating mga relasyon sa ating mga asawa, sa ating mga anak, sa ating mga iba pang mga tao nakakahalubilo, dapat si Kristo ang nagiging pundasyon. Imagine, if the wife responds with respect which allows her husband to be responsible and the husband responds in love which he lays down his life for his wife or the well-being of his wife. Imagine that. Imagine if a believing wife respects her husband, the husband will respond in love. If the wife allows him to be responsible, the husband will lay down his life sacrificially and selflessly, all for her benefit, all for her good. I'm quoting A.W. Tozer as I end. He said, If God gives you a few more years, Remember, it is not yours. Your time must honor God. Your home must honor God. Your activity must honor God. And everything you do must honor God. Life together. We are encouraged to live life together, not only as spouses or couples, but also as churchmates, or neighbors, or friends. We do life together to honor God. We do life together to fulfill the purpose of God for our lives. And I'd like to encourage each one of us today that to value that relationship, value your relationship with Christ, Value your relationship with one another. Value your relationships. Because these are the very things that the Lord has entrusted to us. God has given us one of the most beautiful gifts. And that's family, friends. I would like to bring you to a place to appreciate this beautiful gift that God has given us. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you, God, that you have given us a good understanding 
on how Christ values His relationship to the church, to us. Maraming salamat, Panginoon, that it is, it is a picture of a husband and wife. That despite the imperfections, you were the one who initiated the unity and the oneness that they could live together and enjoy fulfilling your purposes for their lives. Panginoon, dalain ko na ang bawat sa amin ay makita ang importansya na lalo po namin palaguin, palalimin, palawigin ang aming relasyon sa iyo at sa ibang tao. Thank you. God, that you have given us families and speech of families whom we can rely on and, and build the strong relationship and friendship with them. Maraming salamat that you have given us people around us who can strengthen and encourage us when difficult time comes. Thank you for using them. Thank you for this day. We honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Alex, for that very powerful, encouraging message. We just pray, Lord, that you will, uh, you will continue to prosper and continue to water that, that seed that has been sown in our hearts today. Can we just all give praise to God for the message? Amen. And before we end, can I invite everyone to stand up on your feet and let's receive this prayer blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. And may the love of Christ and the grace of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless everyone. See you next uh, Thursday for our prayer online prayer meeting. And of course, don't forget to discuss what we have talked this morning with your family members about a uh, relationship about husband and wife Jesus my savior your never ending god you are eternal always available Jesus be Don't let me wonder You are steadfast You are faithful Don't let me wonder Don't
devotion. It's only you who can satisfy my wandering heart with your love. 